Now this is the way to start the week. Watching On Top and Hot with your favorite host, John Zadar. And today is Monday. It is September 16th. Now if you watch my show, you know what we do here. I like to turn you on to a hot penny stock that I found through the day as I was trading penny stocks, which I do every day. I trade stocks under five bucks. And you know where I find them? Anywhere I look. Penny stocks are only about price, not location. So you can find them on every single market. And I'm always looking for a hot penny stock to share with you. One that has potential to make money. And when I'm looking for these hot penny stocks, I'm normally looking at the charts. Because in a little amount of time, literally at a glance, I can see a bullish pattern on a chart. A big W, a double bottom, we know it's going to run. An atypical breakout, we know that's most likely going to run. A cup and handle, most likely going to run. You find a chart that has heat, then go find some hot news to match it. And just don't be going through filings and press releases over the last couple of days. Go back a month. Any piece of news that still has substance can get a hot chart moving. You got a hot piece of news to match your hot chart, what do you got? That's right, a hot penny stock. And that's what I got for you right now. This is ticker ISPC, I specimen. We got to look at her now, folks. She's at $4.47. She's about ready to leave Pennyville. But there's some things happening right now. I caught it because of the chart. Because she did a reverse stock split today, a 1 in 20. They had roughly 13 million shares. They're now down to like 600,000 shares. Super duper small float, folks. But that's not really what's got me excited. It looks like it was a successful reverse stock split. If any of you monitor reverse stock splits, you normally see after they push that price way up and take all your shares, the price falls. Falls hard. Now, a lot of times it'll bounce somewhere down there, but a lot of times it don't. It just comes all the way back down. This one went down just a little and then took off and just ran, folks. And she is still looking like she is ready to run. That's why I want to talk to you before she gets out of Pennyville. So ISPC, she finished today just under $4.50 and she's up almost 16%. This is a hot penny stock on the major exchange, a lot better than your OTC stocks because it comes with benefits. First off, there's no transaction fees. You get in and out of your trades absolutely free. You get to trade pre-market, after-market. You never get to do that with OTC and folks, some of the biggest bounces I've ever seen happen pre-market and after-market. Plus, there's a lot more money and a lot more volume up on the major exchange. And that's what you need if you want to be making profits, if you want to trade successfully. And last and definitely not least, there's a ton more rules up on the major exchange these companies have to abide by, which is really good for us. That's how we lose money down on the OTC because there's not a lot of oversight, not a lot of rules. So all those rules, that's protecting our investment. So what is ISPC about? Well, let's just bounce on into the most recent news press to find out. They tell us here that iSpecimen offers an online marketplace for human biospecimens. Flesh, organs, biofluids, bone, whatever. Connecting scientists in commercial and nonprofit organizations with healthcare providers that have access to patients and specimens needed for medical discovery. Now, believe it or not, we are not talking about healthy specimens here. We're talking about disease-infected specimens. It is scientists, biotechs, that need these specimens to experiment on, to try their new concoctions, their wannabe drugs, to see if they can beat the disease. And when they fail, ultimately, the specimen is now worthless. So what do they got to do? Buy another one. This is a great repeat business, folks. These biotechs and scientists buy a lot of specimens. And as you're going to see in the news, their last quarter, they went up in revenue simply because they raised the price on their specimens. The company's proprietary cloud-based technology enables scientists to intuitively search for specimens and patients across the federated partner network of hospitals, labs, biobanks, blood centers, and other healthcare organizations. This is a very needful business, folks. Without this sort of business, we couldn't get new drugs on the market. So we're going to dive into this piece of news, which is really the only piece of news we've got. This came out August 6th, and they are telling us about their second quarter 2024 results. 
They tell us right off the bat their revenue increased 76% year over year to approximately 2.8 million. Now, I was reading the financials. It said they did 5.1 million since the beginning of the year. Same period last year, they did 4.5 million. I think this last quarter, they did 2.8. iSpecimen's strong results reflect the progress we have made towards operational improvements throughout the company this year resulting in a 76% increase in revenue to $2.86 million for the second quarter of this year. The initiatives we have completed, namely our Next Day Quotes program, has quickly become a key focus internally for our business and has significantly improved our conversion rates throughout the first half of the year. In addition, our Supplier Refresh program has allowed us to engage with our suppliers at a level not previously possible which in turn has contributed to increased velocity through our sales funnel and the strong results we generated for the quarter. We also continue to decrease costs through our headcount and other expense reductions as we focus on driving towards profitability and increasing shareholder value. Now a few bullets from their last six months. In the first half of 2024, 58% of our next day quotes were converted to purchase orders. As of June 30th of this year, iSpecimen had over 105 unique supplier organizations, which has actually dropped considerably. Uh, at the beginning of the year, they were at 243. But the reason their suppliers have dropped is they're weeding them out. They want strong, confident suppliers, so they're getting rid of their weaker ones. Also, as of June 30th of this year, iSpecimen had $2.15 million in cash available, which is actually a drop at the beginning of the year. They were up at $5 million. I'm not quite sure why it dropped. So let's take a look at the relative volume for the company today. Well, we can't compare it because they had a reverse stock split. I don't know what they did yesterday. And even if you go somewhere else, go to Yahoo or Finviz, it's going to be the same thing. Everybody is going to change everything the same. And here's the worst part. When we get over to the chart, this 1 in 20 reverse split has kicked the price up now 20 times. Well, they multiplied the whole chart, not just from today forward, as you would expect, the whole bloody chart all the way back to its very first day. They have multiplied times 20 now. Unbelievable doesn't make sense. So, Today, we did just a little over a half a million shares, so they tell us. Share structure for ISPC is super duper low now, folks. We were up near 13 million before the 1 in 20 reverse stock split, and now we're down at 654,000. But that's not the float. That's the outstanding share count. I have no idea what the insiders own. And you've got to subtract that from the OS. That tells you your float. So... <laughs> Our float is super duper, oh my God, minuscule. It is so small. So if this company was to do 6 million shares tomorrow, that means every single share would virtually have to sell 9 or 10 times over the same day. And you know some people are going to be hanging on to their shares. So now you've got a supply and demand issue. There's not enough shares to go around. And what happens is the people holding their shares ask for more. And these things start to run like there's a short squeeze going on. So this has a lot of potential to run right now. Market cap. We don't know what that is. However, we could probably figure it out. 1 million shares times this would give us 4.4 million. A half a million would give us 2.2 million. So we're somewhere near 3 million in our market cap, roughly. Financials for ISPC. This is the first time I've looked at these, by the way. <laughs> Over the last four years, she has been up and down. She had her low point four years ago. She was at 8.1 million. I know it's millions because we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. She pushed that up to 11 in 2021, fell back a little in 22 to 10 million. And then in 2023, we we're just under 10 million at 9.9. .9. But we are making strong profit. They're doing roughly $5 million every single year. Thank God for that. Quarterlies, we get quarterlies here. I like that. Looking over the last year, a year ago, we were at $1.6 for three months. Kicked it up to 2 7 
dropped down about a half a million over the next two quarters and now we took that back and now we're up at 2.8 2.9 million with 1.4 million in profit this is all looking good they are starting to grow their revenues taking a look at that balance sheet we got to bring those three zeros over here too looking at cash and cash equivalents might as well think of it as the bank we got 2.1 million just like they told us they had in cash total assets though is up near 12 million liabilities we are under half of that 5.8 million so we do have 6 million stockholder equity in this company their revenues are growing their profits are growing stockholder equity is there things look pretty decent with this company disclosures for ISPC this 8k that's about the reverse stock split this 8k this goes with the 10q their quarterly report you always have an 8k come out with the 10q virtually says the same thing with a lot less information still a little difficult to read and then we've got an 8k here what was this one about can't remember let's just dive in and see uh, they were changing directors they had some directors leaving and they had some votes normally I would see if they were voting on a reverse stock split but considering it already happened I don't think we're going to have to worry about another one and then you've got an SC 13G 13G, 13D, these are filed whenever a new investor comes on board and buys so many shares, they become part owner. This one bought just under 4% of the company. I didn't recognize the name. So there you go, folks. Looking over at the news, just so you can see, there wasn't anything over here except the announcement of the reverse stock split and the announcement of their quarterly reports. So that's all we really have. There is no real catalyst not really the company's doing business as usual things are good they have equity they have profits they have revenue but the chart was successful today with the reverse stock split and there's a little more on that chart that was catching my attention which i think we really need to pay attention to so let's go take a look at that chart now so we're going to chart this on my free trading platform think or swim since we can't do it on yours we are looking at ticker ISPCI specimen got her opened up to a four hour six month view and she has been in a downtrend but she has also had an uptrend and then back into her downtrend now the first thing I need to remind you is we can't trust any of the numbers from today back <laughs> only today's numbers can we trust and going forward but everything in the back has been multiplied now by 20 so if you found a high a month ago that was a dollar go look at it now it's twenty dollars so anytime you look at the history of this chart you're going to always have to divide the number by 20 but the chart itself has not changed the percentages have not changed just the actual numbers themselves so we can still read the chart and get some information here so we had that downfall come all the way down here and then bust loose right through that 200 really high but she came back underneath well that was a hundred and fifty percent jump that was a hundred and sixty that's a hundred and fifty this is a hundred hundred and twenty that's a mere fifty percent <laughs> but you see how many huge jumps we had here now she did break out here we broke out when that 200 went flat see it's falling here went flat she is up bouncing off of it getting these huge jumps then she finally came underneath took one big poke before she came back under then she started to fall and this is where it gets very curious to me folks our 200 day SMA is falling you do not see breakouts when it is falling well this broke out not for one day but for five days not just one bounce but multiple bounces with a huge surge that is a breakout no doubt about it why she did that I don't know but I sure like it it's a little weird because I've never seen it happen before so after she hit this high up here she came back down underneath that 200 all the way down to this low they announced the reverse stock split here that's why she's falling she comes down and somewhere in this region early in the morning pre-market they did the reverse stock split they adjusted this chart really fast I never saw the green bar here normally it's there for a couple days and you get to see the stock fall afterwards and bounce well we don't see anything here but that's my point we see a drop from about 397 that's today 
We can trust that number. Down to 341, and then it took off, and she jumped all the way up here to 488, and she's come back down right on top of her nine-day SMA, looking like she is ready to start climbing. Our volume has been getting stronger, but all of this was sell volume. This was just hanging in there of volume, and today is recovery volume. This was the reverse stock split, which normally you would see volume in it, but that would be because it was selling. This was actually being bought up today. Our oscillators down here. Our PPO is down deep because of this fall here. That brought her underneath. But you can see she's climbing back up. Needs to get on top of this pink line. Our MACD is the same sort of thing. She's already had a crossover. But we got to get it on top of this signal line up here. But you can see the green bars accumulating. That tells us we have positive power coming into the picture. RSI is falling right now. She's gone from 51 down to 47 today, and I don't like to see it anything less than 55, and if it is less than 55, I want to see it climbing. So this is a pretty weak chart right now, except to say that we do have the chart changing trend right now. She was successful in the fact that she is not falling, falling, falling after this reverse stock split. You'd never know. She's starting to climb. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So here she is on top of the 200, actually on top of our 50, took that huge jump up, came down very fast, right to the 200, just walked through the 200 without any fight to stay up there. All of our SMAs are on top of us, we're underneath it, being pushed down, there's our announcement of the RSI, our RSI reverse stock split, and then she starts cupping back around. Now, we could be setting up on a cup and handle right here, but I really wouldn't be looking for that with a reverse stock split in the middle. What I do see here is that our price was underneath all of our SMAs yesterday before the reverse stock split. She has crossed the 20, the 200 haul, and the 50 is sitting on top of her nine, on top of everything, waiting to be pushed now to that 200 with all the MAs underneath. Now, what I'm looking for here specifically, all of our MAs are starting to turn up. Our 50 and our 200 haul are our last ones. That purple one, that's the 200 haul, folks. That's my favorite MA, moving average. The 200 MA and the 200 haul are cousins. They have the same strength, the same power, the same authority. But most people don't use the 200 haul. But here's the benefit to using it. The 200 haul, just like the 200 MA, takes 200 days of prices and averages them all together. But then it does something special like an EMA. It takes current prices into consideration. The MA does not do that. So the 200 haul relates to the price, literally. And you will see that they work together in harmony to push the price up to the 200 and through the 200. When does that normally happen? Right about now. When that 200 haul goes flat, starts to turn up, and on mine it turns blue. When that turns blue, that is a signal to me to watch the price. If it is above all the SMAs and the MAs are all turned up, I'm watching for a burst to the 200 and through, which would get us out of Pennyville. That 200 right now is up there at 527. What do our oscillators say? Well, we've already had a crossover on our PPO, percentage price oscillator, just like the MACD, except it uses a percentage of the price, or the MACD uses the whole price. MACD, we have that crossover now. She's on top of her line, on top of the signal line, and the green bars are off and on, off and on, but they're big. They're nice big bars up there. RSI is still falling. Now, at least we're over 55. We're at 55.4, so it's warm, but it is still falling, and it doesn't look like it on the chart whatsoever. Let's come on down to that 15-minute five-day. So we've got a 200-day MA here, which is falling hard and showing signs of just starting to come up right now. She has broke out early, which this one shows us it can happen. So she could break out right now, even though I think she needs a little more time. Uh, she's already there. She has bounced up once, tapped, came over, tapped, bounced up. By golly, that might be a very weak W there. Could be a cup and handle there. That could be a cup and handle up to the same exact zone across the top, fall down. Now, that's more like half the cup. 
You normally don't want to see the handle come down any more than one third. Once it comes down, you normally see a big run go up. Doesn't mean it's going to go forever. It just means there's profit to be taken. So right now, all of our MAs are pushing up, crossing the 200. Anytime a small MA crosses a bigger MA, it's called a golden cross. And you normally get extra power. You get extra boost to the price. Aha! Did you see that? Just happened. Rewind and see. That green bar just came into the picture. So she is climbing right now after market. We had lots of volume at the start of the day. Kind of got wimpy in the middle. And the volume came back in at the end of the day when she really started to push strong. She jumped here from 395 up to 483. Folks, that was like a dollar jump there at the end of the day. Now she's come back down and we're at roughly 448, 450. Let's just take a peek at the five minute. We are already changing our trend on the five minute. Our 200 is falling, went flat right here where we had our breakout and she's climbing now. She has bounced off of it a couple times, pushed herself up and now she is not coming down to the 200. She's coming down to her 200 haul and her 50. This is a beautiful setup. Oscillators are a little bit weak right now, but there's a lot of volatility here, a lot of ups and downs. So I know this is changing a lot every few minutes. So I like the chart, folks. I like the fact that this was a successful reverse stock split. That says more than you can imagine. There is like maybe if we're lucky, one out of 10 is successful, if we're lucky. And they are always up on the major exchange when, when they do that. So we're in the right place at the right time. We've got a super duper low float, volume is coming in. I would put this on my watch list for tomorrow and I would definitely be watching this as early as you can pre-market. Remember, you can trade pre-market. You don't need to sign anything. There's no special permission or qualifications. Just get in there and trade. But it is the wild, wild west, folks. A little bit of volume can make the chart move a lot more in these periods of time. Plus, you've got to change your order period. It's not a day trade, which is in there by default. You got to get in there and change it to EXT or after hours or pre-market or whatever the heck your broker says. You don't change it. It won't even see your order until the bell goes off. Then your order is going to happen. So if your order doesn't happen when you put it in, chances are you didn't change the time. Either cancel that order because it'll go when the bell does or just change your time period. So there you go, folks. ISPC, my hot stock of the day. Go do some more research. Never hurts you. As a matter of fact, it's probably going to help. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks. Music